Welcome back to the 6th Gear Garage. Today, I'm going to show how to change the oil on a Honda Aquatrax using an oil extractor pump. It's crucial to properly drain and fill the oil as explained in the manual. There are two extraction points on the motor and after adding fresh oil, there's a certain procedure to ensure the proper amount is added and not overfilled. I'll show all of that today. To start with, I have a new oil filter and four quarts of Pro Honda GN4 motorcycle oil. I went with 10W40 based on the average temperatures where I'll be riding here in Ohio. I ended up needing a little more than four quarts, so I bought an extra four quart jug to keep on hand, or just an extra quart bottle will do too. And you'll also need an oil extractor pump. This Briggs & Stratton one was 39 bucks on Amazon and it holds four liters. Links for all of these are below in the description. First, I'm going to extract the oil from the front of the engine. I lowered the front of the trailer to tilt the nose downward. I'm not sure how much this helps get the oil to the front of the engine, but every little bit counts. There are baffles inside, so I'm, I'm twisting and turning the hose to work it into the oil tank. Twisting and turning, your feelings are burning. You're changing the oil. Sorry. But was that not their best album? And the hose isn't deep enough. There's some dirty oil. Keep pumping. And it's already slurping. Like the last ounce of a milkshake. I'm getting mostly air now. That's it for up front. Maybe half a quart so far. Now, let's go to the rear of the engine. Right behind uh, this air intake tube, there is another oil dipstick. Well, there's no stick, just a cap, really. There, you can see it. Shiny black plastic cap. Now, I'm going to pump oil from the back of the engine, so I have the trailer adjusted to tilt the ski upward as far as it will go. And you can put some blocks under the front for some extra height. That should help get more oil toward the back. All right, I'm back in the hole here. Loosen the cap. And there's the oil opening for the pump tube. I'll wipe this down and set it right here. Here's where I'll set the pump. And uh, I find it's easiest to run the tube through the front seat opening, then down around the uh, outside of the charge piping, behind the rubber intake tube, and into the hole. On a naturally aspirated model, you'll have less stuff in the way. Pump, and there's the old oil. The majority of the oil is going to be extracted from the rear of the engine, so uh, pump for a while. Even though there's more old oil in the engine, I have to stop here because the container is full. I'm past the 4 liter mark. So I'm just going to unscrew the pump handle. I don't want oil to flow in the pump handle when I tip the container. That might be bad for the uh, rubber seals inside. Open the spout and cap the top hole. That was a little messy. I'm glad I did this over cardboard. But maybe don't have your seat right beside you. A little bit of used oil splatted on it. Cap back on the spout and screw the pump handle back on the top opening. I'll clean the pump out when I'm all done. You know, looking back, I should have bought a larger extractor than four liters, since uh, these skis hold about four and a half quarts of oil. I'll put a link to the four liter as well as a uh, six liter in the description. I'd say it's worth the extra 10 bucks not to have to stop in the middle to empty it. I'm at the uh, milkshake stage now. See if I can turn the hose down any farther. Getting every last bit of used oil out of the rear. And done.
It's good to wipe things down right away. I try to uh, prevent any oil drips. I have some unrolled paper towels ready off to the right of the camera. So it looks like I got almost an additional liter of oil uh, and that's on top of the four liters I already emptied out. Don't forget to put the cap back on the rear. Now I'll change the oil filter. Man, somebody really cranked this thing down. Hand tight is fine unless you're like the Incredible Hulk. Luckily I have a filter wrench. This one has three claws and as it turns counterclockwise to loosen, the claws grab tighter. This works great in a tight space like the Aquatrax. Stuff a lot of paper towels down in front of the filter. This gets a little messy. It's like a little tray and there's a tiny slot on the bottom left where all the oil will drain. I need some more towels. Have some ready. This gets messy. Here's the new oil filter. Part 15410-MFJ-D01. And this filter fits all Aquatrax models. Just like on a vehicle, I'm putting some oil around the rubber seal of the new filter so it doesn't get stuck to the engine. And hand tight is good. Now it's time to add the new oil. I know I removed somewhere around four and a half quarts. There is a specific procedure for checking the level and getting it just right. Right now I'm pouring in this entire jug of four quarts. And that'll get me close enough to where I can start the engine and run it to do the final check. Yeah, it looks really full inside that dipstick hole, but ignore that for now because it's not accurate. I'm out in the driveway for this part because I'm going to run the engine and there's going to be water involved. The first thing to do is adjust the trailer to get the ski sitting level. And to do that, I have a level. Yep, we're good here. I just finished washing out the extractor pump with some simple green to keep it working like new. When checking the oil level on these engines, do not thread the dipstick on. Just set it on the top like this for an accurate reading. If you tighten it down and then check, your oil level will appear higher than it actually is. Here you can see the level is at the bottom of the dipstick. These engines need to warm up for an accurate reading, so let's fire it up. It's important to start the engine first, then turn on the water. Running the water without the engine running can cause damage. I just use a section of garden hose with the end cut off and it slides over the fitting on the rear. After a minute, the ski will start to uh, pee from the left rear. This is the first start of the year, so that's the pink antifreeze from when I winterized it. I'll have to get that video uploaded soon. Now it's good and warm, notice the steam coming from the exhaust. Also, when I touch the water coming out of the ski, it's warm to the touch. Always shut off the water first, then the ski. Running it for 10 seconds without water won't hurt anything. Now with the engine warm, let's check the oil level. I'll clean it off first. Then just set the dipstick on top without tightening it. And there's no reading at all. That's why it's crucial to check the oil with the engine warm. Now I know I need to add more than if I went by the reading when the engine was cold. I'll run it again to be sure the new oil is cycled through the engine. Just for a few seconds, no water needed. One final check and crap. <laughs> I put in a little too much oil a minute ago. It didn't take much. Hey, it happens. It's easy to overfill these skis. I see a lot where someone buys an Aquatrax and they remove five, six, or even more quarts of oil on the first oil change. I'll just use the extractor to pump a little bit out. Unfortunately, I already washed this thing out 
with degreaser and water, so I'll have to do that again after this. So you might want to wait until you're completely done and the ski is topped off before you wash out the extractor pump. Okay, one final check and the level is perfect. Thanks for watching and please give this a thumbs up if you found it helpful. Consider subscribing for more how-to videos and project updates here at the 6th Gear Garage.